ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಪರಂ ಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಬ್ನಮಿ ಓಂ ರೋಡೇಶನ್ ಶು ಸದ್ಗುರು ಹೀಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ದಿ ಗಿವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಎ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಭಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿ ಈಥರ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಇಟರ್ನಲ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಥ್ರೀ ಗುಣಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ ಮಾಡಿಫಿಕೇಷನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪ್ರಿಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಯೋಗ ವಾಶಿಷ್ಠ ಉಪಶಂ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಸೇಜ್ ವಾಶಿಷ್ಠ continues to impart spiritual wisdom to Shri Rama. At this stage, the context is the highlights of sadhana that lead one to Sahaja Samadhi, lead one to enlightenment. The enlightened state is described as Sahaja Samadhi. Sahaja Samadhi, Samadhi requires a lot of practice. but sahaj samadhi is spontaneous and that point i have clarified yesterday normal discipline requires certain time certain position certain change in the environment then only you can have samadhi otherwise your samadhi gets disturbed sahaj samadhi you can be in most turbulent circumstances and your samadhi is not disturbed because it is not something that you are you are acquiring is something that you, you it is a revelation of your essential nature and that's the goal of life the goal is not to secure a status based on karma any status you base on karma will be in the world of time and space and it will have a time limit kal bhagya put it in a witty way the bhagya term bhagne yogya that which is capable of running away it will not be staying with you and that's what people call fortune luck so no matter how lucky you are your luck will not stay it is something that comes to run away in time but if you move towards god realization that call aho bhagya <laughs> aho aha term comes from uttarayana movement agnir jyoti aha if you are following the course that is bringing in your personality vairagya and understanding the world is not your goal and as you are moving towards that understand that vairagya and vairagya is supplemented by vivek that you don't really have to work hard in reality you are the self the satchidananda absolute so that type of 
discriminative vision arises in your mind. That's the second step, viveka. The vairagya and viveka have developed in your personality, your daily life will be a life of integral yoga, a life that will bring harmony in your four aspects of personality, your reasoning, your willing, your emotion, your action, described as Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, all these four, whether you know it or not, whether you recognize it or not, real spiritual movement is an integration. It's not a mantra movement <laughs> with hunchback. Prakriti is hunchbacked if it is disintegrated movement. But now it's a straightforward Prakriti. So when you live that, the Sanskrit word is ah. It's a joyous state. So, when your fortune is based upon ah, aho bhagya. <laughs> the bhagya is where your fortune is not described in the terms of fruit of karma but in the terms of a revelation of yourself. This is a big difference. So try to understand the difference. It's just going after bhagya and or enjoying a whole bhagya. Just as a lotus is not affected by the impurities of the lake, in the same way an enlightened sage Although he dwells in the world, continues to bloom unaffected by all the blemishes of the world process. How can a person attain a bhagya in a world which is full of trouble and blemish? You exhaust all your reasoning to understand the point. Shouldn't you wait for a for an era or Satya Yuga or a special time <laughs> when it can be possible for you? Probably you just <laughs> that idea enters in human mind. <laughs> Today age is totally different. Talking about liberation is out of point. <laughs> Everywhere you have negative things going on. So how can you attain that? Ask a lotus. The pond or lake is full of muck. But how does a lotus attain that ability to blossom so beautifully and not to be tainted by the blemishes of the lake. Let lotus be your guru. <laughs> so don't talk about things have to change in order for me to become a spiritual seeker. In spite of all that goes on, if you are developing vairagya, viveka, and a spiritual movement within yourself. The world is always, because it's a divine creation, the world looks through your mental vision, limited mind, you interpret it as a terrible world or a joyous world or whatever, but the world remains just the same. Just to understand the point, people generally have that idea, oh, if I was in Rama's yuga, I would have done it. But you have to be a bhakti there. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm joking. But <laughs> what I'm leading you to understand, <laughs> think of any yoga. Put yourself there. You must realize same troubles have been there in every yuga as you study the scriptures. In Rama's time, things were not so easy. You couldn't go into a forest <laughs> unless you were eaten by some demon. <laughs> Krishna's time, <laughs> lot of trouble. In all our dharas. So, instead of thinking in that way, try to understand that every situation, wherever you are, is a divine creation. Well, well suited for your soul's evolution. Now, therefore, stir up your self-effort. So just as the lotus is not affected by the impurities of the lake, in the same way an enlightened sage, although he dwells in the world, continues to bloom unaffected by all the blemishes of the world process. Not only unaffected, but rather aided by the blemishes of the world. The blemish of the world process that brought Jesus to crucifixion. <laughs> but crucifixion has aided the Christianity to be always triumphant. <laughs> and this point relates to Gita's, Lord Krishna's statement in fifth chapter. Brahmanyadhyaya karmani sangat chaktva karotiya Lipyate nasa papena padma patram yibambhasa. If you perform your duties or rather live your life in the spirit of integral yoga, if you automatically you are performing your actions by invoking Brahman. Because integral yoga has its goal to lead your soul to realize your soul is not an independent individual entity. Your soul is absolute. Remember the simile of the reflected sun. All these minds are like little jars of water. So each mind, in each mind, the same absolute self is reflecting. But when you turn your attention only to the reflection, you are far from the majesty of the absolute self. And that identity that holds on to reflection only is your ego. So as long as you view yourself, I am, I am this body-mind co complex, that I am holds on to the impurities and is shaken by karmic process constantly. So if you hold on to the to I am and look for its progress and its fulfillment, that you will never succeed. All that you get is bhagya that runs away from. You do a lot of good karmas or whatever karmas and attain certain good conditions and but they will not stay. But when you allow your life to, to move with that vision that you don't really want to stay in the world, but you want to be led by divine hand to states of 
attainment when ego does not get inflated, where ego goes on getting deflated and effaced. Self-effacement, surrender to God, and thereby invoking Brahman, that's Brahman Nyajaya Karman. If you perform that, Lipyate Nasa Papena, the world can have all impurities, but you have nothing to do with it. All the papas, all these impurities will not touch you. And you will shine Padma Patram Ivambhasa, just like a lotus in water. It's further extended in Buddhism. Om Mani Padme Hum. <laughs> you find your whole ego personality becomes just a drop on the lotus leaf. And how long a drop can stay on the leaf? One little breeze and boom. <laughs> your soul's individuality, your awareness of your egoism vanishes. That's called nirvana. Just as a lion is not affected by elephants in the same manner, he who is endowed with intuitional knowledge is not affected by the miseries of the world. Sadhana becomes more effective when it is inspired by faith. Faith-based movement. Here I am not talking about blind faith, real faith. Faith-based movement leads you to that understanding, that type of wisdom that roars like a lion and it scatters all doubts, discussions, logics, palabras. When a lion roars, you don't discuss with the lion. <laughs> Even if you are like a, like a, with having elephant type of majesty, the worldly attainments will make you look like wonderful elephants with wonderful cushion on your back and all decorations. But you may have thousands of elephants but one little lion comes and roars and all those elephants run. So all your attainments based on karmas and all your involvement, how happy you will be if you secure those things. That's what your mind says. But all those sayings are holding on to elephant stage. Faith-based movement as wisdom starts, intuitional awareness, who am I? Am Brahmas, that the roaring of the Vedanta Kesari. <laughs> Vedanta is a liar. When he roars, Am Brahmas. I'm not using the roaring sound. <laughs> I am Atma Brahman. I am Brahman. This very self is Brahman. Just as the trees of the heavenly garden are not entwined by poisonous creepers, in the same manner the mind of a sage is not entwined by the desires of enjoying the objects of the world or in all attainments in worldly way. 
your mind is always entwined by many desires. You are never a, a healthy tree. Your goodness in you, your fortune is not like a healthy tree. The tree entwined by venomous creepers. But if you, have, you are attaining spiritual enlightenment, if you move towards the realization of the Self, that movement is compared to a tree, majestic tree, without being entwined. The tree that confers all, all your desires, all desires are fulfilled. Kalpaka tree. No more poisonous creepers entwining the tree. He who has ascertained the illusory nature of the world is supremely detached from all its objects. Most important point, <laughs> allow your understanding that the world is illusory. Something has, someone has given you a good gift. And, and your mind becomes so excited that it is such a costly gift, such a beautiful pearl. <laughs> but you don't realize that pearl will hurl you into many troubles. <laughs> you have to now preserve it. See that it is not stolen. At the same time, you have to popularize it, that you have a pearl. Because <laughs> the pearl doesn't speak. <laughs> to put it on your neck and make your neck vulnerable <laughs> to thieves and robbers. So therefore, the wiser way to understand it is not all this wealth of the world. They are illusory. They are not really giving you happiness. You are creating an illusion of happiness. Pearl, it doesn't, you can't even eat it for breakfast. <laughs> But all your idea of being so happy about it <laughs> is based on illusion. The same thing applies with all worldly attainments. All worldly, your, your own personality, body, mind, set, through which you are experiencing all this. So just focus on that. How long can you stay with your body? So therefore, all your experiences are like dream experience. Compare it with your dream. In your dream, things seem so real until you wake up. Things become, seem so real in life. But simply because they seem real, that doesn't mean they are real. Dream is your example. While dreaming, you have no question about it. You never doubt that everything that we're handling in your dream, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Similarly, you are caught with the same illusion like dream. The world is a kind of long dream. 
And this point has to enter the heart if you are a spiritually growing personality. In brief, the entire world is Maya, illusory. If that understanding deepens, he is not even affected by the death of his near and dear ones. There will be a tremendous difference in your inner psychology. You will Internally, you must understand also, when we say that you are not shaken by death of near and dear ones, but that's your subjective private matter. Dealing with people, sages never exercise their internal detachment and impose upon others. They just don't, don't you realize you are Brahman? <laughs> don't complain about your headache. <laughs> no, if you have a headache, your saintly personality will develop great compassion, great feeling, give you a good balm. <laughs> and will not scold you. <laughs> so, <laughs> saintly personality will share the sufferings and the misery people suffer because of their departed near and dear ones. Sage will pray with them. All that he is able to do is because internally he is untouched by death. In his vision, death is not something pathetic. First point, death is not destroying your soul. Vasansi jirnani yatha vihaya. Just like people throw off old clothes and put on new ones. So you go on throwing off your personality, body, mind, complex and putting on new ones led by your karmas. So from the point of view of the soul, death process is its fortune. From the point of view of the near and dear ones, it has some different impact on so many people. It is always a negative feeling. What a loss. To the masses, loss aspect dominates the mind. To a sage, the divine plan for the soul highlights his understanding. So therefore, there is no, no reason to allow yourself to suffer with sorrow and anguish. But in order to come to that level, it is a progressive movement. Coming from the Moha state to healthy state requires its own time. But no matter how much it, long it may take, you must continue to insist on bringing yourself to a state of not being shaken when you hear people are killed, they are dead. When the mind gets accustomed to that, they want to hear and they, through the TV and the news media. So always shocking news comes, somewhere people are being killed, people are dying. But Godward mind or a mind moving to enlightenment or God or mind that is enlightened. For that 
The phenomenon of deaths that goes on in the world day by day, that does not shake the mind. But not only death of near and dear ones, handling your own mortality, that's the most important challenge. And that's your greatest achievement in the spiritual movement. How do you view your aging and that you are bound to quit the body? And you and we hear from the sages like Kabira, etc. It is just like going to a to meet a beloved <laughs> by moving moving away from one curtain, opening the door, coming out of a one chariot. This chariot body has been holding you and you are going to move away from it and come closer to God. This is joyous. When will it happen? Just as dust particles do not taint the sky, egoistic illusions in the form of pride, infatuation, doership, enjoyership, and, the, and life, do not taint the mind of a sage. All these ego-based illusions to understand with what are the malas, gross impurities, and how those gross impurities capture your mind completely. But if you be, begin to develop a deeper understanding of who am I from body point of view, from personality point of view, you will shake because that's the nature of your personality. But for your soul point of view, that's what you have to understand. As a spiritual advancement continues, you are not exhausted in your personality. Your personality is only a address. You are beyond your body, mind, self. And that there lies your deeper fulfillment. And day by day nature shows you, when you go to sleep, you are not aware of your body, you are not aware of your mind, not aware of your ego that you are so involved with. And yet you are. That you are without body, mind, etc. That must become highlighted whenever your mind has calmness. Give opportunity. When you do sadhana, that opportunity comes more and more. If you do japa, meditation, live your life with integral plan, then you have more time. Each time you meditate, you allow the time and affirmation. I'm not the mind, I'm not the body. Or you allow a devotional movement. The whole world is creation of God. I am being led by God. His grace can work wonders. I don't have to worry about it. When you allow these words to enter your mind, they play their part. And big changes go on occurring within yourself. To such an extent that you live your aging life not constantly worrying about death. Rather, death is kept in God's hands. You get become like Bhishma. <laughs> you die by according to your will, when you want to die. <laughs> and when you want to die again, 
you you being god's will so whenever god's will is there that's your will once you are in tune with god then you don't worry otherwise time passes in worrying imagining for the disease of darkness there is no greater remedy than light never allow ignorance ignorant view or ignorant ignorance based vision to correct your painful situations implying what i am implying by act of ignorance you can't remove ignorance <laughs> the only way ignorance is removed by the light of knowledge so too for the disease of ignorance there is no greater remedy than the attainment of knowledge acquired by the insight that the world entire the world is illusory in nature the more you understand the world experience is not the reality is an experience based on your senses based on your nervous system it's kind of an ipad experience how co- how can you make it eternal to so don't wait to be shocked by its mortality understand <laughs> live to understand nothing of this is going to stay and be bold enough to allow your heart to be joyous nothing exists nothing belongs to i am that am i but in order to lead yourself to that level allow your mind to come to devotional level first nothing exists instead all belongs to god nothing belongs to all things that are to be accomplished in the world it's god who is doing it not me i do nothing i'm neither the doer nor the enjoyer i'm just the channel when you begin to mature at this level then the other level opens that god is brahman and all he has created by maya so that world is the world he has created is not the reality the magic when a dream is known to be only a dream then the experience of pleasure and pain arising in that dream become insignificant this is the practical reality in dream sometimes the you you develop the understanding or insight it's the dream the moment you develop that idea while you are dreaming you are in a state of shock suspense in a terrorized state <laughs> but suddenly it dawns upon you oh it is a dream once it does things of the dream don't disappear still you see your body subject to ex- the dream tra- tragedies very worse tragedies even your head can be flying away from your yes. trap <laughs> and yet absolute relief is a dream similarly when the world is realized to be of the nature of illusion all one's experiences of pleasure and pain become extinct 
just as the eyes of fish are not affected by water. In the same way, the intellect of a sage is not affected by the waters of the world process. It's another wonderful simile. Fishes do not go on winking in the water. <laughs> their eyes are open all the time. And the water doesn't affect their eyes. Now, just like the lotus was your guru, now your fish is the guru. <laughs> Live in the world of salty water. <laughs> But possess the eyes of the fish, possess that vision. Vision of who am I? And when you have that type of vision, all these salty vision, all the salty water that affects normal vision, that doesn't affect, affect you. Therefore, in Indian culture, we use the word Meenakshi, <laughs> fish-eyed. Ladies are given a very commendable type of name, <laughs> fish eyes, <laughs> beautiful eyes. <laughs> but it is a divine name. Fish eyes means you are enlightened. Nothing in the world will affect you. The fishes go on seeing everything in the lake. Eyes are always open. Hmm. There's no, no need to close them. The enlightened eye sees everything, but everything is illusion. Those are truly blissful days when the sky of the heart is flooded by the lustrous rays of the moon of divine bliss. That's the advanced state of wisdom. If you remember that Uttarayana movement, Agnir Jyoti Aha Shukla. Vairagya Agni Fire Viveka Jyoti. You are developing discriminative knowledge, you are light, light of light, that type. Aha, I have already described the aha move. When you begin to live that way, it opens up Shukla, an allegorical. This description is made of that state, your heart becomes like a firmament, like the sky. And a sky that has full moon shine, not just dry sky, filled with joy. The description of ananda, bliss. And that is the that type of experience awaits an aspirant as he follows these steps. Another point you have to understand, while we describe all this step by step, don't take it mathematically that you have to have this step, then the other step will come. Even advanced experiences sneak in, even while you are in a lesser stage. And that becomes the source of your inspiration. Those are truly joyous actions which arise as ripples in the ocean of bliss and which do not cause the development of egoism to the deeper level of a sage. All things that happen, they are firstly illusion, 
Secondly, they are acts of God. And they are all designed for your own good. Therefore, the impurities in you do not stay. Impurities such as egoism, raga, attachment, dvesha, and all, all other impurities. Like the moon overflowing with its internal coolness, the heart of a sage who has become free of the illusions of the ego overflows with the nectar of spiritual inquiry, which are practice of understanding who am I, that opens into the heart bringing cooling rays of the moon. Because the moment you ask who am I and move away from your ego, you are opening a window for the moon to flood in your heart. But when you are sticking with your egoism, ego, normal ego, then that window gets closed. Now your whole attention is on roaches and spiders, <laughs> crabs, scorpions. They are indeed real friends who promote the development of vairagya in the heart of a person. This again, this is profound conduct, instruction for how you should live your life in relation with others. No matter who, who is there, how you are related, you are a mother and you are dealing with the son. Be a friend of your son. So see what will be the best for your near and dear one to make that person really free of troubles. And the answer always is Godward movement. Help people to develop interest in becoming a devotee of God. Interest in living a life of integration. Interest in awakening faith-based energy and the ability to discover who am I. And with this, so it concludes. <coughs> Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvar Bandhanan Mrityor Mukshima Mam Ritat Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashidukabhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 <coughs>